So good evening, uh, Saturday night now and I'm up on Tom Heights above uh, Tarnhouse, uh, Coniston and the Langdale Fells over towards the, the west there. Now it's uh, about an hour before sunset and uh, I've given myself plenty of time to get up here. It was last night that I recorded the previous vlog, which you'll have seen last week probably, where I was on uh, great intake. And if I was there tonight, I would have probably got the conditions I wanted, where Lingmel is uh, beautifully lit by this amazing side light. The layers over there are absolutely fantastic. The various heights you can see. This is a mod. This is probably the smallest fell I've been up in the last week but it gives you a it's in the center of where i've been really just behind you there we've got black crag park fell and black fell which is from a previous vlog we've got lasso barrow just over there and then we've got great intake over there just past um uh home fell there so really smack bang in the middle and again like i said in last week's vlog a really good indication of the topology and how things work I was right to go to Great Intake last night um, in the last vlog because you can see from a distance here the illumination it's going to give and there's shafts of light coming across it's absolutely fantastic so I was going to go there again tonight but I thought in for, for want of a bit of variety I'm going to try somewhere else new which is why I'm here on Tom Heights yeah, I've literally just arrived so I'm going to uh, set up in a sec i'm going to start taking some shots see how i feel and if i uh, see anything spectacular i'll uh, talk you through what i'm uh, thinking what i'm seeing but again what a glorious evening absolutely fantastic it's been really warm today as well uh, it's still quite warm now but there's a little bit of a breeze so it's uh, having to a bit of lightweight and coat tonight but um it's still quite cold when the wind gets to you so we've got Weatherlam over there where the sun's going to go behind there shortly. Uh, so before it does that, I want to get on and try and capture some long lens shots again, just picking out these layers because they're absolutely fantastic with this light. So I'll chat to you again in a few seconds when I've got uh, something to talk about. Uh, I'm sure I will have tonight because it's absolutely fantastic. So we'll get on and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Wow, what a fantastic shoot that was. Probably the, the laziest shoot I've ever been on. I've, well, I've walked up here. I've literally got to the summit of uh, Tom Heights here and I've not moved. I've plunked my tripod down, made a wide shot with my 45mm lens to include the cairn here and the wider vista. And then I quite quickly swapped over to the one, uh, my longer lens, the 135, and the extender as well, and picked out the uh, magnificent backdrop here absolutely stunning what a glorious evening here in the lake district we've got weatherlam to the uh to the left there to the langdale pikes in the right and the fells in between we've got um home fell in the foreground there and then we've got great intake where i was in the last video uh piker blisco bowfell crinkle crags absolutely glorious when the uh sun dipped behind uh the fells there it cast these amazing rays over to the side of the fells absolutely a privilege to witness and a privilege to photograph really awesome we've got um if you saw my last video where i was up on great intake if i'd have got the the light i've had received tonight then wow that would have been stunning but i'm so glad i've uh, come out again this evening and and made that shot it's absolutely fantastic really exciting the other thing I've noticed as well is uh, obviously home fells just here and the ridge line's got lots of sporadic silver birch trees what are, are dotted across the uh, the ridge there and at the moment they're all very vibrant and green and as the sun was setting there they just gl glowed in it was awesome they were like these illuminous green trees which I've managed to frame there's one just down here with the Langdale Pikes as a as a backdrop there and I've managed to perfectly uh, well I say perfectly it's it looked good on the back of the camera you know with the dark fell um, facing me but then this one tree on top what was glowing it was really nice I can't wait to get back and have a look at that so I'll uh, I'll run through some of the images in a bit of a slideshow here and uh, see what you think and leave me a comment in the uh, 
in the description if you've uh, got any thoughts or feelings about the images or if you've been to Tom Heights and what you think of it that would be uh, be interested to uh, hear your thoughts this is the first time I've ever been here so I'm quite privileged to get it in such good condition really okay so let's run through a few of the images what I've uh, captured this evening first off um, this wide scene setting panorama and uh, just a fantastic privilege to be uh, to be here and to be able to make an image like this I'm uh, I'm really delighted how these images have come out so as we can see there we've got the um, the the first fell in in the stack if you will his uh, home fell and we've got these nice uh, silver birch trees which home fell is uh, famous for in the uh, foreground there Ill being illuminated by the the sun setting over to the west to the left there and uh, that's really brought out this otherwise dark um, portion of the image i think if those dotted trees weren't there then this image would just wouldn't it wouldn't justify itself as as being a good image i don't think uh, you know I, th I think it just brings that dark third lower strip brings it out to life really really pleased with how how that's come out i've processed that um minimally as well it's maybe a bit cool the image uh, from memory from recollection of how i felt it was but i'm, I'm pretty pleased for my first image so this next image is um it's the same um scene obviously but i've just cropped the um it's a different image actually a different series of images what have been stitched together uh, but it's a much tighter crop which i felt might work well on the thing but not overly sure on that we'll progress along and see how we go but again bringing out the uh maybe more emphasis on on the trees in the foreground there and again, uh, back to the wider shot, but a bit more of a, a warm tint to the image, which uh, I think is probably more a truer reflection of how I was feeling about the scene and uh, how, how it appeared to me from, uh, from memory. And again, just looking at the, uh, the different crop there to uh, give more emphasis to the... Uh, I think when you, when you have a panorama what's so wide, it's quite difficult to bring any feature, make any feature really prominent. I think it, it can be um, it can be lost in the wider scene, whereas these tighter crops uh, can can give a bit more a bit more length on the uh, on on the height or a bit more height. Sorry, on on the mountains there. So this, uh, this so this is the third version of the same image. So the first one is the uh, letterbox one. The previous image is the the more squat panorama, and now we've got a square crop. And I'm I'm thinking I quite prefer this square crop. I think um, again the the focus really and and well the reason for the square crop was to to highlight the silver birch there. What's just illuminating on the uh, on the banks of Home Fell there, just bringing a bit of light to the uh, otherwise quite dull foreground. All the action though is happening. Uh, beyond home fell really uh, in the layers what appear beyond the scene so here's uh, again a, a wider warm p panoramic um, I, th I think at this point in I remember at this point in the show it's hard these all these uh, scenes are, are shot through multiple exposures what have then been stitched together and I think once you've done that two or three times you think well that's it you know it's not you've got a question what how much skill you need as a photographer to make an image like that when all you're doing is setting your tripod level and snapping away you know it's it's not like you're composing anything really you're just taking a photograph of something what exists it's like going to the alps and standing on the top of a mountain and pointing your camera in in the direction you know what's where the nice light is really so it's it's a bit of a cop out really from a landscape photography perspective I think the the hardest part of the whole thing is perhaps getting there and and getting the weather to be how you like it. So I wanted to keep things a bit fresh, so I started to look around to see you know is there anything else I can see whilst I'm up there. And this is a view looking down towards Coniston Water. Well, that is Coniston Water there, uh, and you can see some of the boats there in one of the bays on Coniston. 
it's it's an odd one coniston because unless you shoot it from monk coniston where coniston old man is above it's pretty nondescript where there's no um specific fell or geological feature from this perspective looking over it the i guess the the nice part about that image is this warm light on the silver birch and the uh the, the evergreen trees there on the slopes of Tom Heights. And this is Coniston Old Man, what I've just mentioned, with the light streaming over the fell tops there. That's uh, just caught my eye as maybe that's a nice detail as the, uh, the light was streaming in. Uh, and then this is looking back over towards Weatherland with uh, crinkle crags in the distance, again over home fell. And I love shots like this where you get the... Um, the sun just just out of frame and you can see the the kind of the the burst of light on the edge of the frame i find that really appealing um you know rather than shooting directly into the sun just make sure that it's in the scene but just not a dominant feature and i think i i, I really quite like that image i think it's uh, nice and inviting nice and warm again looking over so the layers start to come into effect now and we can see the uh the the fells there and how they're all layered up so we've got um like i say home fell in the foreground there and and then we've got great intake just behind there where i was in the previous vlog and then beyond that we've got pico blisco and then we've got crinkle crags to the left you can see where it gets its name from with the crinkly top and then we've got magnificent bow fell there to the right which is uh, a fine fell in its own right so yeah a lot of depth there a lot of uh, character nice little cloud over crinkle crags there as well but i love the layers in in that shot uh, and then on this particular image we're focusing more on uh, the center of the scene again taking in the langdale pikes there and that just that look at that diagonal shaft of light what's illuminating um the the pico stickle there just below it's um it's fantastic we've got those trees illuminating on home fell in the foreground as well so th this crop the the reason behind this crop is to give more emphasis on that shaft of light and again those layers and just getting the ridge line of home fell in but reducing some of that darker color again i quite like the the layers in there and uh Maybe not the strongest of compositions, not proportionally perhaps doesn't work, but um, you know, you've got to experiment with these shots. This is an image I really do find attractive. Uh, I really like the square crop and I really like how we've got the, the foreground tree illuminating and it's almost illuminated on a, on a diagonal uh, where the, the sunlight is uh, He's casting the shadow across the, the ridge of home fell where it's then illuminating the top half of that birch. And then we can see some of the sporadic birch trees along the undulations on the top of home fell there before we're into uh, Lingmore and then uh, and then the Langdale Pikes, Harrison Stickle and Pico Stickle there. It's uh, that, that's probably one of my favourite images so far, that one, which is ironic really because it's only a small section of the wider view and i think that's an interesting point really about what i said earlier about how hard it is to take the image well it's not hard to take the image but maybe the hard bit is seeing the image within the image and this is a subject i've touched on in my autumn vlogs from last year where i went up home fell and i was shooting the quarry within the woods before you know it's all too easy to say oh look at this wide vista let's capture all that with a a wide angle lens or something but within that scene there is there are other opportunities and there are other configurations or compositions what you can uh, you can work with your creativity your artistic flair to bring out a nice image in its own right and this is a crop from the previous image again just trying to keep the the darker ridge of home fell in the foreground with um those birch trees what you can see there and then obviously get this layered effect of the fells going across with that glorious side lighting on the uh, on the distant fells they're really pleased with that it's uh it's important well it was important for me to try and get both of the langdale pikes as the collectively known are effectively made up from three fells which is 
Pike of Stickle, which is the one you see on the left there, and then you've got Harrison Stickle, the taller peak in that image, and then one out of the frame to the right is Pavey Arc. And I think showing both of them in this particular shot just gives it a sense of place, so it's uh, it's obvious of what it is. Uh, this is another image looking to the left again, where we've got um, uh, another little tree on the bottom left there, glowing up in the fading light. And then we've got uh, Great Intake, Pike of Blisco, and uh, Crinkle Crags and Bowfell, a beautiful layered image again there. And there we go, back to a wider perspective where you can see the light and how that's changing. We're getting diagonal light coming over great intake now and lighting the uh, the valley just behind uh, home fell there. It's such a shame I uh, didn't get that light when I was at great intake. That would have been a real treat, that, that one. And again, looking at the square crop for uh, focusing on the layers again and the, the light coming in. Now this image, I am really attracted to this. I think that is a wonderful image. If I don't, if I say so myself, I just love the the layers and how the square crop. Um, it, you're using it to constrain yourself there instead of just saying, "Well, that's what all of it looks like." Again, it's just picking out a composition within there. I think this tree on the bottom corner just being slightly illuminated breaks up that large, dark expanse of space. And then we're on to great intake and the quarry workings behind, and then Pika, um, Pika Blisco, and then we've got Bowfell in the background. I wish you didn't get that break between the uh, the very furthest fell, which is Bowfell. You can see how um, Pika Blisco there just breaks its ridge line and drops back down. And I I would have liked to have got this continuity of each fell having its own perfect silhouette but obviously uh, I can't control the geology maybe I needed to be a bit higher up to achieve that but um, that's a very pleasing image to me that one I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud of that so again looking back over to uh, my illuminated birch there and the, uh, the the Langdale Pikes I think it works well as a, as a square crop that one Okay, so this is uh, the lights dipping all the time here, and we've got um, a, another attempt at making a layered image where we've got the uh, Home Fell, uh, Lingmore, and then uh, the Langdale Pikes behind. And again, each the, this is a, a good example of how each ridge line can flow seamlessly from left to right without being interrupted by another. And I think that works quite well. It's nice to have the addition of. The, uh, the silver birch on the bottom left corner just getting a bit of light as well to break up that dark area. I think if that tree wasn't illuminated like that, I would be loath to keep that in. I don't think, I think that would be uh, too much, too, a too great a portion of that image would be in shadow and be dark then, but I think that the illumination of that works well. Okay, so here's a, a, a letterbox shot again of the similar scene where we've got the seamless interruption of the fells running left to right where we've got the uh, the Langdale Pikes there, Lingmore and so again as the lights dip in just there's a bit of haze in the atmosphere as well so it's not a hundred percent clear you've got this nice diffused look to the uh, the light in the distance there it's uh, not bringing out every tiny little detail but I think it just adds some real atmosphere to that image and we've got these, again, the various layers between the fells there. I'm really pleased with how that image has come out. So here we've got a square crop of the, uh, the scene there. And again, with the silver birch illuminated on the, uh, on the, the darker bank of uh, home fell opposite me there. And now we've got some light illuminating uh, Lingmore as well in the midground, which is just bringing that the texture out on on that surface and we've got the dark ridge going over and then another shaft of light coming in and and illuminating um pico stickle there and it's very steep banks Re really pleasing image that one and uh, again with the sporadic silver birch what we've got there on on the home fell it's uh, you know we've got some scale there as well so uh, i'm delighted with that image really really pleasing 
So again, uh, uh, revisiting the wider scene, and again, look at those glorious layers coming in, and the light just kept getting better and better, and like I've said in the previous image, we've got light illuminating Lingmore fell, the middle fell on the right-hand side now. Um, what a treat, an absolute privilege to be able to witness this, let alone photograph it. I think uh, this is a shoot and a, and a series of images what will stay with me for a very long time. I'm uh, privileged to have witnessed that. So this is uh, another version on the previous image I've just shown you there where I've cropped into this a little bit tighter in the letterbox format. Um, I wanted to keep, if, if you look in the, the ridge lines on the very bottom, it's like a V where it comes to a, a central point there where it's almost, I, I hoped I could try and raise that up from the bottom of the frame but there's uh, there's some geometry in the hidden areas of the frame there what would just break that so that's as tight as I could get it but again concentrating on the light uh, the layers and also the the scale of, of the larger fell in the background there I again pretty pleased with that image I think it's a, a strong image this next image as well um, which goes along with it, it's the same image but just a slightly organized um, re-manoeuvred crop so it, again like i said earlier it takes in both of the prominent peaks of the langdale pikes there just to give it some uh, some recognition and then this uh, fifth version of this scene this is again a tighter crop in a different shape and this is me wanting to try and work the scene there so i can i can get that v or the intersection between the two ridges in the in the foreground just off the the very base of the image only from an aesthetical point of view really try and make the image a bit more balanced um i think cropping in that far i'm not sure overly how how well that works given the fact that there's not much going on on the horizon on the left hand side of the image but either way um again gl a glorious moment to photograph okay so this is um this is an image I made after about a 20 minute break from uh, I bumped into a couple of guys who, uh, who we follow each other on social media. So Mikey Twadogs and uh, Tom Blockley. So I had a chat with them for a while and uh, while we were chatting, the scene was developing in the background and the sun. Would, so, so I broke off from that conversation just a few moments before the sun fully went behind the background. And this is the effect it had. So this is as the sun was um, was half in and half out, if you will, of the scene. And it gave this glorious orange light right across the scene. And like I say, just by zooming into crinkle crags there and uh, great intake in the foreground. And then Pico Blisco both fell in the background. That's uh, again another strong layered image for me. Uh, this is the, the, the wider scene. From where that previous image was taken so you can see what effect the sun was having there where it was half in and half out and obviously the scene's a bit darker now where we've got um you know we're losing illumination on all every second of the moment there uh, and then the sun's gone as i'm looking at this next image where you can just see these glorious warm rays coming across the scene there fantastic so a bit more subdued scenes now. Um, we've got this uh, this image again. It's the same composition as one of the previous ones, where I'm looking at trying to capture all the different layers. But you can see now how the light's not illuminating um, the lower slopes of of the distant fell. It's more uh, just approaching the halfway point of the fell. Just gives it a totally different look and feel, really. And again, back over to the left-hand side of the scene. I think this is actually working in its favour now. It, it's working in its favour in the sense that it's more subdued. There's more light coming on. And if you look really closely there, you can see the the quarry buildings, what were in the uh, the previous vlog from Upgrade Intake. So uh, what a fantastic scene that is to say you've, you've been over all those fells. It's... Uh, it's a, such a privilege to uh, to know this area. So this final image from the the pikes there, we can see now that the 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 foreground where we've got um, Home Fell and Lingmore in the midground, it's all very dark now and uh, no direct illumination. But we've got this 
wonderful shaft of light in the background there just uh, shining down the back of what looks to be the back of the Langdale Pikes now and uh, it's such a joy to watch the light and how it paints across the landscape and and how things go from being you know when you look back on the first image how it's nice and bright and evenly lit for, to this almost it's like stage lighting isn't it you know it's uh, or stage lighting's like this really you know it's probably where it's come from it's it's so interesting to just observe the landscape and see how how different lighting gives a different feel and a different look and uh, an absolute privilege to to witness and an absolute privilege to photograph okay and then this is the wider scene from the cairn on tom heights looking over it's a regular shot just uh, with my 45 mil lens just looking at the scene there so that just gives you an idea of what you're looking at really and then the power of a telephoto lens where you can zoom in and pick out all these details so you know coming full circle to what i've said at the beginning about the skill involved in in photographing a landscape like this uh you know what's the difference between this photograph and some of the zoomed in photographs where i've shown you well you know anybody could take that image i'm showing you there you know it's just a snap it's a 35 mil equivalent lens you know probably most mobile phones could make that image but seeing the compositions within that scene there and isolating them is perhaps where the the skill lies and obviously we're not in control of the weather and the light but um i think on nights like tonight where it all comes together it just shows the skill or or the uh persistence of the photographer to keep going and keep trying and put himself out there it's uh, it's too easy just to stay in and be comfortable and warm and you know watch tv or do something you know and, and the, i'm so privileged to have made these images uh, i'm going to have them forever and i'll be proud of them for a long time i'll i can tell you that much Okay, well, I think I'll leave it there for this evening. It's uh, There's still some light, but it's uh, quite subdued now, so I'm going to uh, make my way back. It's coming quite cold now from uh, a very hot, warm start to the evening. So if you like what I'm doing on my channel, please feel free to subscribe. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and uh, a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you want to support me and my photography, then there's no better way to do that than a purchase of one of my lake district landscape photography books capture lakeland and capture lakeland volume two two hardback coffee table books what i've self-published each book contains over 100 images from all across the lake district book one was made over 15 years from the start of my photographic journey if you will up until uh, 2017 and then book two is 2018 a year in the life of uh, so two different books but uh, they've both received very good reviews and praise in uh, the comments section of my website if you have a look there see what other people think um, that would be great if you could support me with the book that would be really helpful to me and my family anyway i'll leave you there sales pitch over and shoot over such a glorious evening real privilege to be out and to make these images and then obviously to share them with you here now so thanks for tuning in and uh, i'll look forward to seeing you again on another video coming soon all the best for now. Bye-bye.